Oh boy, William got inside a cave during an archaeological expedition. There were three ways out, however, only one of them was safe. His map said that behind the first way out, there was a pond that swallowed everything in. The second way out led to dangerous dinosaurs that would eat him alive. The third way out led to an erupting volcano. Which way was safe? The second one, because the dinosaurs went extinct many years ago. You're running away from a pack of zombies and come across three doors. Behind the first one, there's raging fire. Behind the second one, there's a lake of water. Behind the third one, there's a venomous snake. Which way would you choose? I'd recommend to choose the second one and swim away. It's just a lake. You can do it. During his vacation in the jungles, Aiden was caught by some tribe. They tied him up and said they'd push him into one of the three pits of his choice. The first pit was filled with zombies. The second one, there was raging fire. The third one was filled with huge pitcher plants. Which pit should Aiden pick? He should choose the third one. The pitcher plants only eat insects. They're not dangerous for people. Aston reported that someone had robbed his house. Detective Callum arrived and asked Aston to tell him what happened. He said that he walked into his room and saw someone getting out of his window. They must have heard him walking inside the house. Then he checked his desk and found that his money had been stolen. Detective Callum asked if Aston had touched anything else, and the man said he hadn't. Detective Callum closed the case and refused to proceed. Can you guess why? The robber wouldn't get out of the window without stepping on the bed. However, the bed was perfectly made, and Aston said he hadn't touched it. It means there was no robber. Waverly was an archaeologist looking for a pirate treasure. In one of the caves on a deserted island, she finally found it. There were three chests, and one of them was filled with gold and gems. However, if she picked one of the wrong chests, terrible things would happen to her. Luckily, there were statements on each of them, but only one of these statements was true. 1. The treasure is in this chest. 2. The treasure isn't in this chest. 3. The treasure isn't in chest number 1. Which of the chests has the treasure? Let's solve it step by step. If the first statement is true, then the treasure must be in the first chest, and the other statements must be false. In this case, the second statement is also correct, so that was a wrong guess. If the second statement is true, then the treasure isn't in the first chest. The treasure isn't in the second chest either, just like it says. Then it must be in the third one. However, this makes the third statement correct too, although it shouldn't be. If the third statement is true, then from the first statement that is wrong, you can conclude that there's no treasure in the first chest. Since the second one is wrong too, then the treasure must be there. Now there's no contradictions, and the treasure is in the second chest. Whew. Does anybody else have chest pains? Just me? Okay. Skylar and Amelia are pen pals. Skylar said that her birthday was in winter, and Amelia said that hers is in summer. However, a couple of months later, they both had their birthday on the same day. Still, none of them lied. How is it possible? They live in different hemispheres. When it's wintertime in the US, it's summer in Australia, and vice versa. Mrs. Fitz came back from work and found that her favorite cup was broken. She asked her daughters who had done it. Katie said, it wasn't me. Serena said, it wasn't me either. Hannah said, it was Serena. Mrs. Fitz knew her daughters well, and she could tell what happened. Only one of the girls was telling the truth. Can you guess who broke the cup? If Katie tells the truth, then firstly, it wasn't her who broke the cup. Secondly, the other two girls are lying. 
Serena is lying, so you can conclude it was her. But then Hannah is right, and that's a contradiction. Let's say Hannah is right. Then it was Serena who broke the cup, and Serena is lying. But then Katie is telling the truth too, when she says it wasn't her. So Serena is telling the truth. She says it wasn't her, so you can trust her. And Katie and Hannah are lying. Katie says it wasn't her, so it was her. And Hannah says it's Serena, which is a lie. So Serena is the honest girl, and Katie is the guilty one. Hannah is just a liar. Esme was on her casual walk in the forest, and she didn't get lost this time. Here it was, her way home. But the other one was away to the witch's house. After a bit of thinking, Esme decided she had to say hi to her old friends and visit the witch. The witch said she didn't have a riddle for her that day, and Esme was free to go. But Esme had one. She said if the witch got it wrong, Esme would take her cat. Dear witch, imagine you're in a dark room. How can you get out? She mustn't imagine that. Spoiler, the witch got it and kept the cat. Next time, Esme. A police officer was walking in the neighborhood and stopped one gentleman. He asked him what the man was doing, and he said that he had just left his house to go to the grocery store. However, the officer didn't believe him and arrested the man. Why? Look, it's snowing, and there are fresh footprints on the snow that lead out of the window. House owners usually use the front door to walk out of the house, so this one must be a burglar. Bryce was a grumpy old gentleman who didn't like some teenagers walking past his house. So once, he decided to report them so they'd never be allowed to get close to him anymore. He called the authorities and told them that he was having tea on his terrace, and those teenagers threw a baseball at him. Luckily, the baseball flew above him. However, the detective didn't believe it had happened at all. Why? Take a look at the terrace. It's all made of glass. Bryce's place is right next to a window. If the baseball had flown right above him, as he said, it would have broken the glass. Thomas was collecting action figures. Some of them he got from his grandfather. They were super rare, and his collection of more than 500 figures was worth about a million dollars. One day, he came home from vacation and found out that his collection was stolen. Detective Callum was up for the case. There were three suspects, all of them were Thomas's neighbors. He said that the collection of action figures had been stolen and asked what they had been doing during the holidays. Sydney said that she was in the neighborhood. She was working, but had nothing to do with the figures. Mateo said that his grandma is staying with him, so he's always with her, and he couldn't find any room for 500 action figures at his place. Gideon said that he wasn't even in the neighborhood and had just come back himself. Who stole the collection? Mateo. No one mentioned how many figures there were in the collection, but he knew somehow. Samantha, a rich woman, found out that someone had stolen the money from her wallet. There were three people in the house, Malcolm, a cleaning man, Grace, a gardener, and Sebastian, a boy who walks her dog. She reported the case. The police took the fingerprints but only found those of Samantha herself. Still, they had the main suspect. Who was it? The main suspect was the cleaning man, Malcolm. He's wearing gloves, and that's why he was able to do it without leaving any fingerprints. Annabelle didn't want to go to school, so in the morning, she went downstairs and told her mom that she wasn't feeling well. She said that she had eaten a bit of apple last night, and it must have been poisoned because she'd been feeling unwell all night. However, Mrs. Collins didn't believe her and sent Annabelle to school. Why? There's just one bite on the apple, and it's a fresh one. If Annabelle had left this bite last night, it'd be brown. But it was still okay, which meant it was fresh. 
At school, Sophie opened her locker and found an envelope. Inside, there was a calendar and a note asking if she wanted to go to the prom. However, instead of the name, there were just several numbers. 17, 2, 30, 25. Can you guess who asked Sophie to prom? The calendar is the key. You just have to find all the numbers and see what name the first letters of the respective months give you. So, 17 is circled in August, so it's A. Number 2 is in December, which gives us D. Number 30 is in April, so A again. And finally, number 25 is May 25, so it's May. Seems like the guy's name is Adam. Too bad there are 13 Adams at her school. Elsie walked into a party store to buy something. She learned that 1 costs $1, 17 costs $2, and 103 costs $3. She needed 22. What do you think she's buying and how much should you pay? She's probably buying birthday candles for a cake, so each candle costs $1. She needs 22, which is two candles, so she'll have to spend $2. Which one of these students has three mothers? It must be this guy right here, the one with the three sandwiches. The guy with three glasses got them from the cafeteria. He must be very thirsty, but it's not a sign of three mothers. But this one definitely brought sandwiches from home, so I bet it's him. Let me know if you disagree. Let's move on. One of the girls has a pet at home. Can you guess which one? It's the girl in the middle. Look, her hands and arms are scratched. She must be living with a cat. Okay, look at these three people. Who is a vampire? It's this guy. See, he doesn't cast a shadow. Something's wrong. Chastity was at a party and met three guys. All of them claimed to be pilots, but one of them lied. Can you guess who's not a pilot? Pilots must have perfect eyesight. This guy is wearing glasses, so he's not a real pilot. Look at these three students. One of them is left-handed. Can you figure out who exactly? It must be this girl. The outer side of her left hand has some ink stains. It happens when she writes. Since we write from left to right, her arm covers everything she's just written. Three best friends met for a coffee in the evening. Can you tell which one of them has a pet? Look at this girl's bag. There's dog food in there, so she probably has a dog at home waiting for her. This one is super easy. Three sisters came to visit their parents. One of them got engaged while she was away. Can you tell which one? It's this girl who's wearing a ring. Three men came to a job interview. The company didn't want to hire fathers because they needed full commitment for the first year. All men said they were single and had no families, but one of them lied and actually had a daughter. Which one? It's this guy here. Why would he wear a pink scrunchie on his wrist if he wasn't making his daughter's hair right before the interview? Okay, now let's go and look at people's houses. Here are the bathrooms of Daryl and Tiberius. Which one of them has a girlfriend? It must be Tiberius. Look, there are two toothbrushes in his bathroom. Nevea and Nicoline are students. Both of them live in a one-room apartment with their friends to split the rent. Their mothers once came to visit. Take a look at Nevea and Nicoline's bedrooms. Can you tell which one of them is dating her roommate? It must be Nevea. In Nicoline's bedroom, there are two single beds, 
and in Nevaeh's bedroom, there's just one big bed. Look at these three friends. One of them isn't really a human, but which one? Look, this guy right here has only four fingers. Perfect, we trained you well. Now let's solve some cases. The city bank was robbed, and Detective Callum was on the case. After a long investigation, the police managed to track the robber and found the money hidden in the nearest desert in a cactus bush. They couldn't see the robber's face, but there were three suspects. Take a look at the people. Who is guilty? It's this man. Look, he has many scars on his arms and hands. He must have gotten them when he was digging the money in the cactus bush. A group of friends asked Billiam if he wanted to join them on a hike that weekend. He said that he couldn't because he had broken his arm. The next day in school, Billiam, indeed, appeared with a broken arm. So, he stayed at home and his friends went hiking. On Monday, the friends met in school again. Billiam said that he had just stayed home watching TV. His friends told him about the hike and asked why he had lied about the broken arm. Why did they decide that his arm wasn't really broken? Last week, Billiam's right arm was broken. On Monday, it was the left one. He must be faking it. Mr. Tucker called the police and reported that he had been robbed. Detective Callum arrived at his place and found Mr. Tucker tied up to a chair. Mr. Tucker said that he had been sleeping when someone wearing a mask had broken into the room. They took him right out of the bed, tied him up to the chair, and then took all the savings he was keeping in the wardrobe. When they left, he managed to call the police because his cell phone was in his pocket. Still, Detective Callum didn't believe him. Why? Mr. Tucker said that he had been taken right out of bed, but the bed was perfectly made. I doubt that a robber would care enough to make Mr. Tucker's bed on their way out. Detective Callum was spending the winter holidays at a ski resort with his friends. In the morning, they were going to go skiing on the fresh snow that had fallen at night when a local police officer called him and asked him to come to a hotel nearby to solve a case. So, Detective Callum had to go. Someone robbed the cashier's desk and there were three suspects. Questley said that she was in her room all night sleeping. Egbert said that he was out partying in a different hotel and had just come back around an hour ago. Fenton said that he had been binge-watching a show all night but hadn't stolen anything. Who is guilty? It was Egbert. If he had just returned, he would have left his footprints on the fresh snow, but there were no footprints leading to the hotel as Detective Callum was walking there. And the name Egbert will make anyone suspicious. There was a car accident in the suburbs, and police arrived to investigate the case. The driver went into a cliff right where the road was taking a dangerous turn. The car turned around, and he was pushed out of it and got stuck nearby. He had his cell phone on him, so he was able to make a call. A police officer helped the driver out and asked him to show what was in the trunk. The driver gladly opened it with his keys. In the trunk, there was his suitcase, some instruments, and a spare tire. The police officer said that the accident had been staged. Why? The driver took the keys out of his pocket. If it had been a real accident, the keys would have remained in the car. Mr. Grayson called the police and said that she had been robbed. Detective Callum arrived for the investigation. Here's what she said. It was almost midnight. I was in my room upstairs painting. Suddenly, the power went out. There was no light or electricity, and I could only see the streetlights outside. Then, the stationary phone rang. I was scared, so I didn't pick it up. I stayed upstairs, and in about 10 minutes, the light came back. I just went to sleep, and now, in the morning, I found out that someone stole my grandma's diamond ring. Detective Callum didn't believe her. Why? If the lights and the electricity were out, how would a stationary telephone ring? This lady is making things up. Gavin drove to get some groceries and parked his car in front of the store. Of course, he forgot where he had parked and couldn't find his car. 
Luckily, he had taken a picture of his parked car, and he opened it to look up the number of the parking lot. The problem is that his parking lot number is covered, and the number of the lots nearby doesn't make any sense. Can you figure out what's Gavin's parking lot number and where he should search for his car? The numbers are just turned upside down in the photo. The numbers are 86 through 91, and his car is parked in 87. Now I have a short logo quiz for you. I'll show you a logo, and you have to tell the company. Here's the first one. Do you recognize it? It's Honda, a Japanese car brand. This one is super easy. What is it? This is Pepsi, of course. What about this cute crocodile? Does it ring a bell? This is Lacoste, a French clothing brand. Another easy one. I bet you have it on your phone. Yes, of course. That's Spotify. What about this one? Yes, it's Nike. This one is a very fancy brand. What's your guess? That's Louis Vuitton. Okay, another one for you. It's harder, but you've got this. What's your call? This is Reebok, an American footwear company. Do you recognize this bull? Is a Lamborghini logo. This is a painfully familiar yellow rectangle. Where is it from? That's the National Geographic logo. Porsche and Vinette live in a country where postal services are super unreliable. Everything sent by post is stolen from the package. How can Portia send his wife, Vinette, a diamond ring if both of them can buy locks, but don't have keys from each other's locks? Portia can lock the box with the ring and send it to Vinette. When she receives the box, she should lock the box with her lock and send it back to him. When he receives it, he can open his lock and remove it and send the box back to Vinette with her lock only, so that she can open it once she gets it again. There is a box filled with balls of different colors. Five red ones, eight blue ones, and eleven purple ones. Ninja has to pick out balls blindfolded until he's sure that he has at least two balls of the same color. What's the minimum number of balls Ninja should take out to be sure of that? Worst case scenario, he'll be picking out the balls of a different color every time. There are three colors, so if he picks out three, they might all be different. But if he picks out four, then the additional one for sure will match one of the existing colors. So, Ninja should pick four. Blue ocean, golden sand, green palm trees, fresh fruit. This place is like a paradise. It's good that Luke finally went on vacation. He's sunbathing, drinking cocktails, and enjoying life. Such a perfect day. Maybe too perfect. Luke's smile disappears. Nothing is real. Two signs indicate that Luke is dreaming right now. What are these signs? The first thing is that there are two suns in the sky. The second sign is that the ocean has no waves. Luke gets scared. He realizes he's sleeping. At this moment, a giant kraken comes out of the ocean. It stretches huge tentacles towards Luke and screams out like a siren. How can Luke escape from it? Where should he run? There's no need to run anywhere. This is a dream, and the kraken can help Luke wake up. 
The monster grabs the guy and... He opens his eyes and realizes he's in a laboratory. He was caught a few days ago. A group of people have been conducting strange experiments on him all this time. It wasn't the kraken he heard, it was a real siren. Flashing red lights illuminate the lab. The room itself is a mess. Lots of stuff on the floor, overturned tables. There are no people, only pictures of some scientists on the wall. There should be a key to the door among all these documents and garbage. Quickly, help Luke find it and escape. And the key is hidden, not here. It's not needed. The door isn't locked, see? Luke is about to leave the lab, but wait, what does he need to take with him? Look around the room. He can only take one item. Luke should opt for the shoes. They're going to be useful outside. Luke puts on a pair of boots and gets out of the lab. He's in a long corridor. He sees several guards ahead. They start chasing after him. Luke runs away in the opposite direction. There are three ways in front of him. One corridor is filled with toxic gases. The second way is a bottomless dark abyss. The third corridor is so hot that the walls are glowing red. What should Luke choose? The second hall with a chasm. See how the light gets reflected from the abyss? This means there's a glass floor covering it, and Luke can walk on it. Luke runs through the second hall and finds himself trapped. Several guards are standing there and everyone is looking at him. It seems like there's no chance of getting out, but wait a minute, the guards are not dangerous. Why? They're motionless because they're either well-done wax figures or real people who can't move for some reason. Luke leaves the room. And now, he's in a long corridor again. The doors close behind him. Guards are rushing towards him from the hall. And doctors are running from the other direction. What should Luke do? Hurry up, help the guy before they notice him. Do you see a laundry basket? There are white coats there. Luke should dress up as a doctor and walk past the guards. The guy enters one of the many doors and finds himself in a large room for experiments. This is where they keep their test subjects. There are several locked cells with people sitting inside. They ask Luke to release them. Unfortunately, he can only free one prisoner. But who? A werewolf is locked in that cell. An electrical human is in another. A seemingly ordinary girl is locked in the third one. In the furthest cage, there's a guy with a shark's mouth. Luke should save the girl. Come on, all the other prisoners are scary monsters. Did you expect a trick? Sometimes the simplest answer is the right one. Luke opens the cell. The girl's name is Jessie, but she doesn't want to go with Luke. She doesn't believe him. Why? Because Luke is wearing a lab coat, he explains to Jesse that he put on these clothes to remain unnoticed. He's as much of a prisoner here as she is. Jesse finally believes him. Together, they escape from the lab, but the guards and scientists notice them. Our heroes are trapped. There are three rooms in front of them. An electrical current is running non-stop through the first one. Three ferocious lions are in the second room. There's a fire raging in the third one. How should Luke and Jesse escape? They don't have to enter any of these rooms. In the corridor above them, there is an open ventilation hatch. These guys should help each other get in there. They crawl through the vent for a few minutes. Finally, they reach the elevators. But the heads of two creatures have got stuck in the elevator doors. One of them is a werewolf. The other is a zombie. Jesse and Luke can only save one of them. Who will survive without their help?
the guys save the werewolf because the zombie is no longer alive anyway. He can survive even without his head. The werewolf runs away while Luke and Jesse get into the elevator. The laboratory is located deep underground, so they go 40 floors up. The doors open, and they find themselves inside an old hut. Our heroes go outside and see a winter forest. Jesse and Luke run forward as fast as they can. They hear dogs barking and people screaming. The scientists are chasing them. The guys come to a crossroads. The first way leads to a lake. At the beginning of the second road, there's a sign, beware of wolves. The third road leads to a high cliff. Where should they go? It's winter now, so the lake is frozen. Luke and Jesse run across the lake and find themselves in a clearing. Two guys are standing there. Hey. Both of them seem normal. They ask Luke and Jesse if they can come along. Luke feels that one of the guys is not who he claims to be. Hey. How can he figure out which one it is? If you pay attention to the footprints in the snow, you'll see how this guy appeared here. But there are no footprints near the second guy. How did he get here? It's suspicious. Jesse and Luke agree to take along the first guy. His name is Max. He says he's also escaped from the lab. He knows there's a road somewhere nearby, so they decide to find it. They wander through the forest for several hours. No one seems to be chasing them anymore. But now, they have a new problem. They're cold and hungry. Sometime later, they see a small house where they can warm up. But the door is locked. Where's the key? See this scarecrow next to the forest? The key is in its hand. The guys open the door and find food and clothes. They rest, eat, and get warmer. Soon, they're ready to set off. There's an old car in the backyard. There's even some gasoline in its tank. But when Luke is driving it out of the yard, the car runs over a nail. The tire is punctured. Now they have to walk again. It's getting darker and colder. Despite warm clothes, our guys start freezing. How can our heroes keep warm? There are old dry leaves, moss, and grass under the snow. Luke, Jesse, and Max put all this inside their clothes. Yeah, they stain their t-shirts and sweaters, but they also create an additional layer of protection against the cold. Finally, they're near the edge of the forest. Through tree branches, the guys see a road illuminated by moonlight. They're saved. Now they only need to catch a car. Max, Luke, and Jesse walk along the highway and finally see headlights. Luke raises his arm to stop the car. A small pickup truck is slowing down. The driver rolls down the window and asks if the guys need help. Jesse quickly tells him everything that has happened to them. The driver asks them to get in the car, but Luke doesn't want to. He's sure that this man is one of the bad guys. How has Luke figured it out? When Luke woke up in the lab, he paid attention to the pictures of the scientists on the wall. This driver is one of them. The guys run back into the forest where they come across a pack of wolves. The hungry animals surround our heroes. One of the wolves is about to attack, but a loud howl scares it, and it runs away. A monster covered with fur comes out of the bushes. Max screams and is about to run away, but Jesse and Luke look calm. Why? Because this is the werewolf our heroes rescued from the elevator. They follow the monster. It leads them to a safe place. This is a small village hidden deep in the forest. Creatures that don't look like humans live here. Werewolves, bird people, merfolk, and humanoid trees. They used to be people, but the scientists changed the structure of their DNA. Now these creatures are going to destroy the laboratory to take revenge. While Luke, Jesse, and Max are resting, you have time to check your score and find out how useful you've been in this adventure. It's vacation finally. Yay! You can buy a ticket to an unforgettable island full of entertainment. The helicopter takes you there. Unfortunately, 
you won't be able to relax much because you need to solve puzzles in addition to having fun. And at the end of the video, count how well you went through it. You're going to have fun all day. Challenging riddles require concentration and attention, but you want to solve them in a relaxed way this time. Enjoy! The first thing you do is go to a beach party. Sun, ocean, hot, white sand. You take a soda and go dancing. All of a sudden, the music stops. You ask the DJ what happened. Someone pulled the wire from the speakers, she says. You go behind the stage and see five chords. All of them have different colors. Two of them need to be inserted into the speakers. Which ones? Hurry up, save the party! Red and green. There are marks with corresponding colors in the left corner of each speaker. The party goes on. You're tired and hungry, so you go to a restaurant. There's a huge buffet with hot dishes. You take two sandwiches and sit down at the table. After a delicious meal, you decide to have some fresh fruit for dessert. You come up to the table with bananas, apples, pineapples, and kiwis. Some of these fruits are not fresh. Which of them, and why is that? All the fruit trays are almost empty, but there are a lot of kiwis left. People don't take them since they're not very fresh. After lunch, you go to the beach. The sand is so hot that you can fry eggs on it, so you put on your shoes. You see a group of people playing volleyball. You want to join them, get closer, but the game field is empty. Was it a mirage, or did the people leave the spot so quickly that you didn't notice? What do you think? It was a mirage, since there are no footprints in the sand. The sun is hot, and you decide to go into the jungle to hide in the shadows. You go out into a wide clearing and see several people sitting in the lotus position. It's a meditation session. People relax with their eyes closed and do not see that you've come. You carefully sit down next to them and realize that something is wrong with all these people. What is it exactly? They don't just sit, they're floating a couple inches off the ground. Who are they? You get scared and run away from this place. You run through the jungle and see three roads. One is littered with broken glass. There are plants with thorns on the second road, and you see hot coals on the third one. Which one will you choose? Actually, you can go everywhere. You put on your shoes on the beach, remember? In the very center of the island, you find a big old house. Its roof is destroyed and the windows are broken. But there's music coming from the building. You look inside and see a group of people in raincoats dancing to techno. You join the party and notice that each person has long fangs peeking out of their mouth. The dancers turn to you and look unfriendly. At first, you get scared, but then you realize these people are only pretending to be vampires. Fangs and cloaks are part of the masquerade. How do you know they're not vampires? The roof of the building is destroyed. The sunlight gets inside. The vampires should be afraid of it. You keep dancing, and at that moment, you get terrified. The dancers aren't vampires, but they're not humans either. Why do you think so? There's a mirror on the wall, and only you are reflected in it. You run out of the building and go through the jungle. White pigeons fly past you, and in the distance you can hear people's voices. You make your way through the bushes and find yourself at a wedding ceremony. People are sitting on the chairs. A bride, a groom, his friend, and two bridesmaids are standing in front. Everything seems fine, but then you realize that one of these people is an alien. Who?
the bride. You can see that she has three hands. It doesn't scare you too much. After the ceremony, the party begins. You speak with the guests, take drinks and snacks. An old man gets on the stage to deliver a speech. He says that he has a gift to the newlyweds, an elixir that makes a person younger by five years and prolongs life. The same elixir is inside every drink, and everyone can drink it. All the guests rush to the table and grab glasses. Someone drinks two glasses at once. Someone five to six glasses in a row. Someone quickly drinks only one. And among all the people, there is an old lady. She slowly drinks her cocktail and becomes a little younger. Why did the elixir affect her, but not the other guests? The elixir was in ice cubes. The old lady drank for a long time, and the ice in the glass had time to melt. You leave the party and continue exploring the island. Ahead, you can see a tunnel with a warning sign. Beware the phantom inside. A guy and a girl come up with you. They offer to run through the tunnel to check if there are really ghosts there. So it won't be scary, you all run holding hands with each other. The girl is in the middle. It's cold and slippery inside the tunnel. You can't hear anything. You're approaching the exit and finally got out. It was a little scary, you say. It's good that I was in the middle, said the girl. Me too, I wasn't afraid, says the guy. At this point, you realize there was a phantom inside the tunnel. How did you figure that out? Three people ran through the tunnel and only one could be in the middle, the girl. Whose hand was the guy holding? You get scared and leave this place. Evening. You go back to the hotel and see that it's on fire. There's a fire on your floor. You run inside. Fire is everywhere. You have two valuable things that you want to take away. A small safe with documents and money and a laptop with your work. You need to choose one thing. Take the computer. Most safes can withstand high temperatures, but a laptop is unlikely. You can find your safe after the fire. You've got a different room on the 10th floor. It's spacious with an ocean view. You're about to go to bed, but someone is knocking on the door. It's the administrator. She says there's a snake in your room, but you need to find it. Look around and find the reptile. Do you see those beaded curtains behind the second room? Among the beads, you can notice the outline of a snake. You release the snake into the jungle, return to your hotel, and notice footprints on the parquet floor. Oh. Someone was here and wanted to steal something. You call the administrator and tell her what happened. She has already found three suspects, and you need to guess which one of them broke into the room. There are two guys wearing shoes and a barefoot girl. Who will you choose? The girl couldn't leave these footprints. The guy who's standing next to her has soaking wet clothes on. His feet are also wet, but he has put on his sandals to hide them. The footprints in the room were wet. The second guy's clothes are dry. The girl's clothes are dry too, which means the guy wearing wet clothes got into your room. You can't fall asleep in the new room. It's already 3 a.m. and you decide to take a walk on the beach. Suddenly, you hear some noise. A beautiful girl is standing outside the window. She's smiling and looking at you. <laughs> at first, you smile back, but then you pick up your stuff and quickly run out of the room. You call the administrator and say that you won't stay in this hotel any longer. Why did you do that? Your room is on the 10th floor. The girl looked at you outside the window and you got scared. You can't sleep until morning and decide to leave this island. You sit on the sand and wait. A helicopter arrives and lowers a rope ladder. You're about to climb it, but at this moment, another helicopter arrives. It has the same rope ladder too. Now you need to choose the right helicopter.
take a closer look at the pilot of the first helicopter. It's an alien. You get into the second helicopter and fly away. The first one turned out to be a spaceship. Your vacation has come to an end. A shrill ringing of your phone jolts you awake. Your friend, the best detective in the city, is on the line. I don't have time to explain. I'm leaving the city in 20 minutes. You'll have to replace me for the next week or two. Don't try to contact me. As he hangs up, you're left sitting on your bed, the phone in your hand, staring into the darkness of your room. You have to deal with your first case already in the morning. An anxious man rushes into your friend's office. I work as a cashier in a clothing store. Last night, I was the one to lock it up. As I was counting the money, the room suddenly went dark. There was some problem with the light bulb. I climbed the table and grabbed it. But by doing it, I burned my hand, jerked it back, fell to the floor, and lost consciousness. When I came to my senses, the money was gone. You examine the room attentively and realize the man is lying. What makes you think so? The light bulb the cashier told you about is an LED one. Such light bulbs don't get hot. Your first real case makes you hungry. You go to the nearest restaurant to get something to eat. But as soon as you enter, you hear loud, angry voices. A waitress and a visitor are arguing. You also ordered chicken wings, and you have to pay for this dish. It's the waitress. The visitor looks tired and sleepy. But I didn't. I haven't been here longer than an hour. Yes, I did doze off. But it doesn't mean I don't remember my order. You can't help but step in. You know very well that this man couldn't have ordered chicken wings, you say. How did you figure it out? You spotted a note on the wall. It says, the kitchen works till 1 p.m. today. It's now 3 p.m. The man claims he's been there for an hour, which means he came well after the kitchen was closed. After the accident, you decide to have a meal at another cafe. But as you come closer, you see a crying lady. I was going to cross the road when some woman grabbed my purse and disappeared. I noticed her enter this cafe. Can you help me get my things back? You enter the cafe. Ah, that's my purse, right between those two women. But I can't recognize the one who took it. I didn't have time to look at her attentively. You don't need much time to figure out which woman is guilty. It's the one on the left. The woman on the right has her left arm in a cast. If she had taken the purse, she'd have put it on the right side of herself. After such an eventful day, you're exhausted. You fall asleep as soon as your head touches the pillow. But you get woken up just a few hours later. Another day, another case. Oh, you're finally here. A man tied to a chair looks happy. Someone broke into my house this night, tied me, and stole all our valuables. Our mailman came early in the morning to deliver newspapers. He must have heard me shouting for help and called the police. Luckily, all our stuff was insured. But I hope to deal with this problem before my wife finds out about this. You arrest the man for attempting insurance fraud. Why? You paid attention that the newspapers were on the table in the hall, not lying on the floor near the mail slot. Someone must have put them there. It could only be the house owner or his wife, who was an accomplice. After the police arrive, you leave the man's house and immediately receive a new call. Mrs. Smith claims that her neighbor, Mrs. Miller, has stolen her laundry. The woman says she hung the laundry in her backyard at 10 a.m. And when she went out of the house two hours later, she saw Mrs. Miller putting it in her bag. I didn't do this. It's a lie. The other woman looks angry. You look around and ask Mrs. Smith to go to the police station with you for trying to slander her neighbor. How did you figure out that Mrs. Smith was lying? It's freezing outside and there's snow on the roofs. In two hours, damp laundry would be so frozen, it'd be impossible to fold it and put it in a bag. Your phone rings again. It's a woman who works at a museum. You must help me, she cries. When you arrive at the museum, she tells you her story. Yesterday, I stayed late at work. 
I needed to prepare some documents. I was sitting at this table. The overhead lights were off, and the only source of light was my desk lamp. I was listening to music, when suddenly, I saw a shadow to the right of the table. I realized it was a person jumping out of the open window. I immediately switched on the overhead lights and discovered that an ancient vase I kept in my office was gone. This vase costs hundreds of thousands of dollars. You didn't believe this story. Why? If the only source of light had been a desk lamp standing in front of the woman, she wouldn't have noticed a shadow to the right of the table. It turns out that before leaving, your detective friend gave your contacts to all his acquaintances. And now, one of them needs your help. You arrive at his jewelry store. A client came there several hours ago, planning to buy an expensive diamond ring for his wife. But someone stole his wallet right in the store. The manager, he was the one to call you, asked all the visitors who were inside at that time to stay until your arrival. You look at all these people attentively. Soon, you know who took the wallet. It's the man in the middle. He has a bandage on his right arm, but it's wrapped over the sleeve of his jacket, not hidden under it like a real bandage would be. You knock on a sturdy brown door while a woman with a bandage on her head stands next to you. A man opens the door. Excuse me, you say. A pot plant fell out of your window an hour ago and hit this woman on her head. I had to take her to the hospital. She's okay now, but you need to compensate this woman for the damage. May we come in? The man turns pale, but lets you in. It can't be true. Our windows were closed because we've just returned home. I literally entered my apartment two minutes before you came. You realize this man is lying and call the police. How did you figure it out? You spotted a pan with boiling water in the kitchen. If the man had indeed come home just a few minutes ago, the water wouldn't have had enough time to start boiling. Now, it's your friend who needs help. She owns a grocery store. A gust of wind blew a $100 bill out of her hands, and the money seems to have vanished into thin air. Your friend thinks it was one of the customers who took the bill, but no one wants to admit stealing the money. You ask all visitors to go to your friend's office when a woman speaks up. It's incredible to be accused of theft. Here, you can check my bags right now. Please, just come with me to the office. We'll figure it out there, you say. After the woman refuses to follow you, you call the police. Why? The woman is standing on the $100 bill. If she follows you, everyone will see the money. The next morning, rainy and gloomy, you get your next case. To investigate it, you need to visit the office of a large international company. Rebecca, the girl who called you, works there. She says, I've just come back from brunch and discovered that someone had knocked our HR manager out just an hour ago. You question the people who were in the office at that time. Laura is an applicant. She says she was a bit angry with the HR manager. He made her wait well past her appointment time. And still, the girl says, I would never hit another person. I'm also too weak to do it. Gary, who works in the marketing department, claims he hasn't seen the HR manager since he arrived at work. He was in a meeting from the very morning till lunchtime. Jacob from Research and Development tells you he rode his bike to a coffee shop to get his cappuccino. He's just come back. You immediately realize who hit the HR manager. It was Jacob. Both his bike and his clothes are dry and clean. How is that possible if it's raining outside? You leave Rebecca's office and hear your phone beeping. You see a text with an address you don't know. You drive there. A man meets you at the door of a large building. He's shaking. When you enter a large dark hall, you see two containers filled with transparent liquid. Two women are floating inside. They look identical. One of them is my wife, but I can't figure out which one and I'm allowed to open only one container. You walk around the women and examine them. Then you point at one of them. That's your wife. How did you figure it out?
The man's name is Mark. It's written on his biker jacket. His wife is the woman with the letter M tattooed on her arm. Your phone beeps again. You look at it and see a message. It's from your detective friend. There's just one word on the screen. Help! But that's already another story.